This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar exploring third-party tools that work with Apple Final Cut Pro 10. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. This excerpt is the first part of a look at Kino, which is media asset management software. Kino is an easy-to-use media management tool for both Final Cut Pro 10 and Adobe Premiere Pro. It's brand new and allows us to screen, log, organize, and transcode our media. You can learn more at kino.software. It's got a retail of $159 US, but there's a free 14-day trial available. This is the Kino interface. There's three main sections to it. There's the workspace, devices, and activity. Workspaces are like favorite folders, and it defaults to your user folder. We can add more. Devices are all the connected hard drives that are attached to your computer, and this includes camera cards. And activity allows you to monitor background processes. Let's start by adding another workspace. So we'll go up to the gear menu, say add folder to workspace, and I want to add on our second drive, I want to add a folder that stores all of my training media. So we'll click here. And now it's added the training media. Now we could get to the same spot by twirling down the second drive, which has got all of my media on it, and going to the training media folder. It's here somewhere. There it is. And on the right, you notice that nothing is displayed. And that's because Kino only shows us media files, video files, audio files, image files. So it doesn't see text files, it doesn't see folders, it doesn't see PDFs, it doesn't see Word or Excel documents. It just allows you to see media, which is really cool because you don't have to wade through stuff you're not interested in to find the stuff you are interested in. But in order to make the most out of Kino, you need to understand a term that's unique to this program. It's called drill down. Notice that when I select a particular folder, nothing shows up except a media file. Well, what happens if I want to see all the media files that are available to me? Well, the easiest way to do that is to select the folder and then turn on drill down. When drill down is turned on, I now see all the media files contained in all the folders that are inside the training media folder. If we look at this, look at all the different folders that are inside, and that small yellow arrow indicates that drill down is turned on, which allows me to see 1,300 items stored across about three dozen folders. This becomes really powerful. There's three different views inside Kino. There's the grid view, there's the list view, and there's the viewer view. Let's go back to the grid view. The grid view is the easiest way to look at all of your clips at one time. And these clips can be stored in multiple folders because remember, drill down has been turned on. I can't see media across multiple hard drives at the same time, but within a single hard drive, I can see it in any family of folders. Now, several interesting things happen here. If I right mouse click on this, I can assign ratings to a selected group of clips. I can tag them. For instance, I don't do much of my own shooting. The footage that I work with comes from other people. And one of the things that I promise these other people is that I will give them credit in my articles and my training for sharing their footage with me because without them, I wouldn't have anything to talk about. So I want to tag my footage so that I can see where it came from. For instance, this train footage came from Fran and Miles Hale, who run a website called Model Railroad Builder. And they graciously shared a ton of construction and operational model railroad footage with me. I can do more than that. I can rename files, I can copy files, I can delete files, and really powerfully, I can transcode camera native files into, for instance, audio files, files for distribution, files for editing, especially all five flavors of ProRes. I can rewrap a, an MXF file to a movie file. I can even compress it for the web. This is powerful because now I can select multiple files from multiple folders all at the same time and have them all be transcoding in the background without having to tie up Final Cut or Compressor to do that. Talk more about that in just a minute.
once you see a particular file that you like, and let's just scroll down here and find something interesting. Oh, let's take this one right here, double-click it. This opens up the viewer. We can spacebar to play a clip, spacebar to stop. I can decide that that is the best possible place that I want. I want to create a subclip. Type the letter I or click this icon right here to set an in and type the letter O or click this icon to set it out. And now when I click on the convert button, I can convert just this subclip to a particular movie. Let's say I've shot an hour and I don't want to use the entire hour. I just need to pull a, a two minute piece from it rather than have to work with that full one hour transcoded into uh, an optimized format like ProRes 422. I can create a subclip in 422 format already without having to transcode the whole thing. We can't do that in Final Cut. We can do it in Kino. This excerpt was the first portion of our look at Kino, a brand new piece of media asset management software from our recent Power Up webinar, Exploring Third Party Tools for Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this training, please visit my store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 205. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, a membership to our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only nineteen ninety nine. That's more than 1,400 movies, hundreds of hours, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.